Hello. All right. So I uh, have to set up my comments up here. It's just me tonight in the shop, and I need to get. Um, I want to be able to read comments, so I'm setting them up on the monitor. That will take just a second. Here, I exist, I swear, I'm just getting this set up. That's all. Okay, so I can set this. Boom. Okay, now that we did that, got to figure out how to pop out the comments. Pop out the chat. Okay, Merry Christmas. Yes, I suppose I am a working man. But yeah, hey, Merry Christmas. Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. Yes, looks like Merry Christmas. Why, thank you. I do like this shirt. Uh, I like color. I mean, I'm not a black t-shirt kind of guy all the time. So, hopefully I'll be able to follow me around with the camera a little bit more. Um, and one of my goals is to not be off camera so much. So, I'm going to treat this like it is a lesson. Um, and one of the things that when you are making a mold with plaster, plaster's not great for your hands. So I always lotion my, I don't always, but you should, put a little bit of lotion on your hands. Um, just to, as a kind of a barrier protectant, because plaster is very aggressive at drying things out. That's how it makes a latex mask. It sucks the moisture out of the latex that's sitting in the mold, making a skin. Well, it also sucks the moisture out of your skin, making it flake off and break apart. Yes. Uh, I'm also going to go over here and get some gloves. I am very much relaxed today. I got my sleepy pants on. I got a comfy house shirt on. So I'm not necessarily dressed for success, but here I am. Mm. 
John Ranger. Very glad. I'm glad that you make awesome things. That's great. Uh, yes, it is a lot of monster head plaques. Uh, I'm, I'll be very busy this season working on things for the museum. Two of those plaques will be used up before this Christmas vacation is over. Maybe four. All right. So, here I am. The only thing I need to grab is a brush to put at my station, but I'll do that while my plaster is resting. I have in here two fingers of plaster. This is a cut off five gallon bucket. That is, I feel like that is an inch and three quarters. I'm going to measure because I've never measured. Let's do that. How thick are Alan's fingers? Let's see. Well, a little over an inch and three quarters, so about two inches. About two inches of water is in this bucket. Um, because it's a five gallon bucket and those are a standard size, that's a measurement for you. I keep my plaster in here. is UltraCal 30. Y'all ain't got to be far away. Uh, and I'm going to mix this plaster to the dry riverbed method. So I'm not going to, I'm not necessarily sifting it. You can sift it through a screen or something if you want. I am shaking it out. I'm not just dumping it in. I'm shaking it out as I go. It is Christmas Eve. I don't expect a lot of folks to be on tonight. But you never know. I didn't expect 100 people to watch me build Baby Yoda yesterday. And I am just, I'm trying to get even coverage over the bottom, so I'm not shaking it all into one side. I'm trying to mix it up. And by doing it this way, each individual powder is getting saturated with uh, water. And then I'll have less clumping. Um, Psycho Axe Man. I would not recommend doing a fiberglass jacket onto a plaster mold. And I don't recommend that because where's the water going to go? Uh, what's going to happen is that your mold will get saturated with water and then it'll stop wicking. Because the fiberglass is stopping the moisture from leaving the mold. You're putting it into a plastic bucket basically. So you kind of want it to be plaster all around. Tony, I'm telling you that uh, uh, making masks, is, it's very rewarding as an art form to me. I love having a monster in my head and then I can make it and then I can see it walking around. That's kind of cool. Yeah, I kind of just work whenever, Josh. Um, I kind of just work whenever. Most of the time it's after I'm off work, but this is a holiday break, so. And see what's happening right now? You can see those white patches in the, in the bucket. It's sinking a lot slower than it used to. It's not just going, boom, right to the bottom of the bucket. Now, it looks like, you know, the continents. You can see little mountains and stuff building up. 
Now I'm being very cautious because I am approaching the dry riverbed stage. It's going to look like cracked earth. Few things are as brimming with possibility as a full tub of plaster. And turn this stuff into anything. And I'm getting to that dry riverbed. Right now, I'm only hitting the areas that don't have plaster in it. Uh, so it's, it's the very wet spots. I'm shaking plaster into those areas. Because there in the middle, it's a nice thick muck. See that? But there's still some wet spots over here. I'm just getting rid of those wet spots. I want it to look muddy, not like a puddle of water. I am very close to having enough in this first layer. And now I'm dusting a little bit on top of the gray. I want this to have the maximum amount of powder absorbed into this water. I feel like I'm there. Now, I'm not going to mix that right away. I'm going to let that stand for one minute. Alexa, countdown, one minute. One minute, starting now. While that is standing, and what's happening is the water is seeping into every area of, of that plaster. I'm going to grab myself a brush. I like one inch chip brushes from Harbor Freight. I'm going to get you guys set up over here. Alexa, stop. All right, so let's talk comments. Yes, this is like Monster Camp. I'll be very happy to see you then, Amanda. of old school work happens in my shop. Um, you, I'm about to show you exactly how I do it, John. Exactly how I do it. I have made over a thousand mask molds. I mean, I've, I've done a lot of this. Doesn't mean I'm the best, but if my molds fell, fell apart, I would learn to do it a different way. Now I'm running my fingers through this plaster just to look for any lumps. There's almost none, only the bits on the surface really had any lumpiness to them at all because I let it stand and because um, of how we mix the plaster up. From this point, I have roughly 20 minutes or so of working time, maybe a little more. This is Ultra Cal 30. So it is set up in 30 minutes. What I'm going to do, I'm going to move us because 
I'm too far from the TV to read it. And this is my only link to you guys as far as comments go. But luckily, everything in my shop is on wheels. So I can just move it over to here. Baby Yoda was epic. Why, thank you very much. I appreciate it. It very well could be a lot of mold. Uh, yes, I used Pledge to seal the sculpt. Um, Vaseline went over the eyes and Pledge went over the whole sculpt. I did three layers of uh, this right here. Yes, Pledge furniture polish. A little bit of bucket tapping just to get some bubbles to the surface, doesn't make that much of a difference. I'm not brushing this onto the mold. I am loading the brush and I'm allowing the brush to empty on the sculpture. If I brush it around, you could move the sculpt around, especially in wet clay, it's water-based clay. So I don't I don't have that. I'm not doing that. So this mask is my Grouch Sculpt. Uh, it is a nice shop refrigerator. This is one that um, it stopped making ice and they replaced the ice maker in it three or four times. And finally I said, listen, I need an ice maker in my fridge. because This fridge was in my house. And they said, well, let's just give you your money back. Uh, and I got my money back. I did have to, um, it, obviously I can't use it in the house, doesn't have an ice maker in it, but uh, it's okay for out here in the shop. Tracy, I'm glad you appreciate the videos. Um, Psycho Axe Man, I think it's more the temperature of the water as far as how fast the plaster sets. Now the water temperature does get affected by the temperature in the air, but as soon as you start mixing, you start a chemical reaction happening. Heat, any kind of heat in the air or the water, makes that, temp uh, that uh, chemical reaction happen faster. So yes, it does, the air being warmer makes it go a little faster. The fastest I've ever had this kick on me is about 10, 15 minutes. It was old plaster and I used warm water. I didn't mind it, I kind of like working fast, so it's no big deal. I'm gonna work a little slower on this one because y'all are here and while you're wonderful people, you do slow me down. But I thought this is one project, I'm kind of doing it start to finish this mold, and I thought it would be very good video fodder. Um, yeah, you could scoop and cup. I could pour it over the over the mold, but I don't need it to be that messy. You know, um, I'm not in any kind of a huge rush. I plan on this taking an hour, maybe an hour and a half tops. I'm making production mold that I will use here in my shop. This is a grouch mask, as I was saying earlier. And the grouch is similar to the Grinch, but a monster scarier version. I also sculpted this live, so there is that. Sometimes it's cool to see one whole project to completion. I recently did that with the Demi Gorgon costume. I did it with um, Baby Yoda. I know I'm kind of working on the other side from you guys right now, but everything I'm doing over here, I've got to do over there.
What I'm thinking about the most while I'm working is air. Where is air going to get trapped in this sculpture? Um, the teeth are probably the biggest danger for air bubbles. If the tooth doesn't come out, you know, you, you have to fix that every time you make that mask. So I try to not have air bubbles. And when I'm reaching in, every now and then I go all the way down to the bottom of the bucket because I want to feel what's happening on the bottom of the bucket. If I start feeling like a silty, sandy layer down there, I know my plaster is getting closer to kicking or the chemical reaction is happening. And it, this will thicken as I go. It's just going to get thicker and thicker as I go along. Uh, the plastic teeth here are pumpkin teeth. The plastic teeth are pumpkin teeth. Yes, I'm molding them right in there, and I'm going to take them out once it's molded. I may add some termites into his smile. That's, uh, that's a fun reference. Again, it is just me, so if you have a question or something that uh, you would like to have answered and I don't see it, just type it again, you know? Maybe wait a minute or two, type it again, and hopefully I'll see it when I look up. I can't spend all of my time looking at the screen for comments. Um, I am actually working. This is work that I need to do, so this work is my first priority. Uh, this is a sculpture that I spent maybe four or five hours of time on uh, that I could have been doing something else. So if I mess up the mold because I'm too busy paying attention to comments, then I've wasted time. And the most precious thing that I have in this world, aside from my wife, is time. All right, so we are starting to thicken a little bit, and I have a layer of plaster over everywhere, I believe, that is clay. I'm not too worried about the back side of this horn here. And it's not a horn, it's like actually kind of hair, but and now I'm just going over what I've already done, because it is building up a thickness. It's making it thicker. One little dollop at a time, I'm going from a 32nd of an inch of coverage to a 16th of an inch of coverage. And I'll do it again. Uh, these teeth are plastic. These teeth are a teeth called pumpkin teeth gene, and they are from um, pumpkin teeth on Etsy. All one word, pumpkin teeth run by a great guy named Bob Connor. If I was really brushing this on right now, I would just be moving around what I put on there. I wouldn't be building up any extra thickness. I would just be moving it around. So, I don't want that. I'm not brushing it on. I'm emptying my brush. really want this to get thicker, building up layers. If this is your first mold, maybe don't do a full two inches of water, maybe just do one inch. Because I am fighting the clock. As soon as I started mixing it, it's starting to set. And materials are expensive. So I don't want this to die in the bucket. That means it would go hard in the bucket. And I would waste that material. It's not doing me any good. I don't need garden stones. I need a mold. Yeah, I haven't gotten to the uh, 
other whole side of the face yet, but I will. Um, Brandon, I, I am using, you have a lot of questions in one sentence. Uh, yes, I'm using pledge on water-based clay. Uh, the sculpting form is underneath there. I, I use a, a half mass sculpting form that I make. I have not removed it. I have just, um, you know, it's here. Empty my brush into those gums. I really want those gums to fill up. I don't have everything is going to be coated in plaster. When this mold is made, the sculpture itself will be negative space. just got the spot that was bugging you. Okay, good. Um, Brandon, yes, I think Pledge works better than Crystal Clear. Every now and then Crystal Clear will get stuck to your mold and it will hurt your um, wicking of moisture that the plaster does. Since I started using Pledge, none of that happens. And Pledge, I gotta wait about 20 minutes before I mold with um, crystal clear, you've got to wait, you know, four or five hours. So what's happening right now is this plaster is getting thicker. The stuff in the bucket is actually getting thicker on me, which is what I want. It's not, I mean, we're talking, it has moved to pancake batter thickness. Maybe, probably not even that thick yet. I do three coats of pledge. Uh, it is a beautiful process. It's very, um, being good at mold making, I'm not at the level where I sculpt and someone else makes the molds. You know, that's, uh, that's when you own an effect shop or you work at a, in a big effect shop for movies or whatever. I'm not going to work in movies. I don't like movies. I like haunted houses. So, I'll be making my own molds. And if I make a successful mold, then that means I'm going to have masks to sell. This is an investment. I'm investing in this sculpture, the time and materials it takes to make this mold. Because I'm thinking, in the next five or six years that I have this mold, I can sell 50 or 60 of these grouch masks. And I'll sell these with hair, so they will probably go for about a hundred dollars a piece. That's five or six thousand dollars that I could possibly make. You know, I'm not counting in materials or anything because I went through this process. I can make a great mask with buildup, meaning uh, just like I made the, the the baby Yoda. I made baby Yoda, and I made him one at a time. I sculpted it right there on the piece. So I'm not going to sell that. Someone else owns that character. But if I did um, want to sell that, 
my time is in each one of those. And I can't fix that or get that back. So those have to be more expensive. Hello, Doyle. You probably hear a cat, and that is Doyle, who is at my feet. And he really wants attention right now. He is rubbing against my legs. He wants me to pick him up. He loves it when I pick him up and hold him like a baby. Doyle. Doyle, I'm on, I'm on, I'm on YouTube right now, buddy. Oh, my hands aren't too messy. So here's Doyle the cat. This is what he wants. See how calm he is? All he wanted in the world was to be picked up and petted and loved on. And he has run right back to me because what he wants is to be picked up. Now I feel something happening. Now the plaster is getting a little thicker. I'm going to grab a different tool, which is right here. You are killing me, Smalls. He's biting my pant leg because he wants me to stop and pet him. There's an audience here, buddy. We got stuff to do. We're working. This is work. This is. Yeah, Doyle is an attractive cat. See, now he jumps himself up here because I'm not giving him enough attention. Don't rub on this sculpture right now. You would hate it. I'd have to take you to the sink. <laughs> Doyle, you're killing me. <laughs> Doyle, no, no. Do not get plaster on you. My cat is needy, and I don't know what to do about it. But he does make me happy. Alexa, drop in living room. Honey, can you come get Doyle? Hey, wife. He wants to jump onto this table. I cannot let him. I got to throw him out of the building. I'll be right back. <laughs> Come get this cat! He doesn't want me, he wants you! Honey, he is jumping up on the table and he's gonna rub on the mold, I can tell. Put plaster on the cat! Yes, we don't want plaster on the cat. He just wants to bury his face, see his buried face of my arm. He wants love, he wants attention. My plaster is thickening even as we speak. Okay. Set the cat down. Come back to work. I set him down on top of a counter he's never been on. Maybe that will entertain him for a while. Help me. Oh, there he, he runs over to Shannon as soon as she opens the door. <laughs> <laughs> when he wants attention, he wants attention. Okay. Yeah, he was about to be covered in plaster. Yes, that cat does like me.
and I'm just flicking on plaster, you know. Every time it gets thicker and thicker. Because, yeah, some runs off, but not all of it. I'm very thankful for my wife who came over and got the cat. Good Lord. Cat's making me work. Psycho Axe Man, what are you doing? It's one heck of a Christmas bonus, buddy. You just want the cat to come back. That's what that's all about. Merry Christmas to you, Psycho Axe Man. That will go in my big laser cutter fund. I'm working on getting myself a big laser cutter. Right now I have a very a small glow forge, which is like a tabletop model, and I very much want a big one. I am still just doing the same thing. Don't lose focus. Stay on target. Don't get distracted by cats or anything else. Uh, no, I'll probably have to do at least one more batch, Josh. This will give me most of a mold. This will get me most of the way there, but I am certainly going to need another batch. And um, UltraCal likes to be done in batches like this. HydraCal prefers you to do it all in one whack. But um, UltraCal really likes it when um, you do it in three separate layers. This is a detail coat. You know, that's what I'm doing right now is a detail coat. Now my detail coat is going to turn into, you know, a thickening coat, a coverage coat. That's kind of where I'm at right now. I am not scraping the table right now. I'm only running it in the plaster on the edges uh, and I'm pushing that plaster closer to the sculpture. I'm letting it build up or well up right against the sculpture. I don't want this mold to be super duper wide. You know, I don't need it to have a flange of six inches like it's coming out here. Um, but I have residual pledge and stuff on the table. So I'm not scraping that. I'm letting that plaster touch and that stay there. I'm just moving this closer. Psycho, you are very kind. Oh, what size bed? Um, it's going to be a 36 inch by 27 inch bed size. So it's a pretty good sized uh, laser cut. It won't be 4x8, but I don't buy material in 4x8. The foam I buy is normally 2 foot by 2 foot. And there's not a financial advantage to buying it in bigger sheets. 
It's actually cheaper when I buy a floor mat foam off of Amazon. Uh, Harbor Freight's floor mat foam is fine for like hand building stuff, but it's not a level thickness, meaning it's supposed to be three eighths of an inch, but it might be half inch, it might be, you know, a quarter of an inch. The very, a lot of discrepancies between the sizes, uh, the thicknesses of foam. And there's voids in it and little like circle pock marks and stuff. So, but the foam I buy from Amazon is nice. Uh, it's very even, three eighths of an inch. So, uh, that's eight thousand dollars. That uh, that laser cutter. It'll be it'll be just over eight thousand dollars. So it's an investment. But I have been making a lot of apocalypse masks and apocalypse hel apocalypse helmets. Um, they're not what I find the most fun, but I think the industry can use them. The industry needs them. So this will help me make those. I, you know, was fortunate enough I was able to sell, you know, a good amount of them last year. So I trust the laser cutter will pay for itself in a short amount of time. A lot of what I'm putting in the mouth is just dribbling behind all those teeth and running out down there in the corner. That's okay, as long as I'm aware of it. When this starts to thicken, I'll patch this, and then I'll just fill it up like it's a little pool. I just have to keep my eye on thickness. I'm keeping my bucket alive by mixing because it'll thicken on the bottom first for some reason. And if I keep mixing it, then I just get a nice thicker liquid. And hopefully you guys can see that when I put that on, it doesn't run that much. You know, I get a little puddle built up there. Um, Dark Mist, um, Ultra Cal 30 is uh, good for latex. It, the dwell time, it takes a little bit longer to dwell. U.S. number one pottery plaster is the fastest for dwelling. If I use that, I'd only do, spend an hour dwelling a mask. Uh, with this, I spend an hour and 45 minutes. That's my normal. You know, hour and 45 minutes or two hours. Yeah, HydroCal, I might go take 20 or 30 minutes off of that. Because HydroCal wicks a little faster than UltraCal. I'm excited about the uh, big laser cutter because that will allow me to do full sheets. And then I can do EVA foam kits. Any project that will fit within a couple of sheets, I can pre-cut it out of the laser cutter and then sell that kit. You know, all you got to do is punch out the parts that are mostly cut. And that'll be a nice, cheap way for folks to get and make things. Uh, a Grinch mask will run about a hundred bucks after it's all haired and everything. And it's a Grouch mask, not a Grinch. Uh, the sculpt is not dead on for the Grinch. It looks like, you know, you know what a human looks like. Now picture a Neanderthal. Well, a, a 
Grinch is a human and a Grouch is a Neanderthal Grinch. Because I want them scarier. The Grinch looks like a cartoon character because it's a cartoon character. So this has some cartoony elements, but it's definitely a scarier beast. Now I'm stabbing into the teeth a little bit and I'm just making sure that there's no air bubbles back there behind those teeth. I'm making sure it's just all plaster. Because it is filling, it's filling nicely. You know, the plaster wants to cling. If I can get a little bit of plaster to cling to those plastic teeth, well, that's good. And you see, I have plenty of working time. I'm just not stopping. I'm staying focused. <laughs> uh, the Psycho, I, I guess you can do a pre-order. Uh, that would be fine. My wife is actually watching right now. So we would have to set that up. But uh, go ahead and then we'll get you set up for that. If you can send a message to Stilt B Studios just that you did it, once you did it, then that would be fine. And I'll even throw in shipping. Uh, yes, I will sign it. See, now I got some lumps on the bottom of the bucket. I am... Mixing it all back in with the brush. I'm keeping my plaster alive. But it's nice and thick. I don't want it so thick that it won't run behind these teeth and fill these gaps. Gotta fill my gaps. And there are sometimes there's certain jobs that it gets too thick for. So I don't do that then. I wait. I wait for the next batch. You know? I might plug up the side of the mouth with the thick stuff and then work on the, uh, the teeth holes with the next batch. Know what your plaster is capable of doing. I know how much it'll flow at what thickness. And that's important to success. Right now it's kind of a perfect consistency to get in between those teeth and really build them up. I'm making sure no air gets trapped. Yeah, see my plaster now is good and thick. I'm gonna go ahead and switch to my hands. So thick my plaster got. I want to fill in the eyes. I want those pools to be filled in. I want to fill in all of the teeth. I want to take a handful on each side and go up under this cheek. And that big cheek buildup is an overhang. And underneath of that, it's very easy for air to get trapped. So right now, I'm filling that in. Same thing, these little horns that are like eyebrows. Just putting some under that.
hacking in around the teeth over here. I got little tips of the teeth showing. That's perfectly fine. pretty thick now. So I'm putting this under this chin. I'm building up the area right against the base, right against the table, because I don't have a lot of detail there. Heck, a lot of that's going to be trimmed off. But I'm not worried about air getting trapped there. I've already um, got it covered with plaster. All I'm doing is I'm making sure that this material doesn't get wasted. And I'm getting to the thickness I want of the mold down here at this edge. See how thick that is? That's really thick, but it's fine. It's a non-Newtonian fluid right now. It is a liquid that kind of behaves like a solid. So I put it on there and I tap it and that reminds it that it's liquid and it lets it flow. All right, so that is an ugly first coat. First coat don't have to be pretty. It's not the beauty coat. The beauty coat is coming. I'm going to take a moment and clean up around the edge. I don't want to fight that later. I don't want to have this giant flange to bust off of there. All right. Move this guy out of the way so I can mix more plaster. Just about every table in my shop is on wheels because it's just a good idea. These are kind of trash. Hello? Yeah. Oh, are you coming to comment? Yeah. You can have your same seat as yesterday, wife. Oh my goodness, he was so needy. You know, what's funny about that is he was, I had you on the phone listening to you while I was working, and he was meowing, and he was upsetting Jonesy. Oh, so you could hear Jonesy, Jonesy could hear him? He could hear him, couldn't figure out where he was. So cute. So, did you catch that Psycho Axe Man has purchased a mask? Uh, no. Okay. Psycho Axe Man donated $50 to said Merry Christmas. Oh my goodness. Then he asked how much the, the, the grouch mask was going to be, and I said about 100 bucks. He said, can I donate 50 more and just get a mask? And I said, we'll figure it out. I said, go ahead and donate it, and then message Still Be Studios on Facebook. And so it looks like he did, so we will take care of that. I'll try and get it for you. Lick it, you split. You're my only order right now. I'm getting ready for Monster Museum and for uh... Boston. What's that? Boston says hi. Hi, Boston. Oh, hey, Boston. Boston will be a house guest in a few days. Hi, there we are fine. Bye for that. There is a sweet spot as far as when you take the plaster out of a bucket. Soon, your plaster is wet and sticks to the sides. If you want to stick, if you want to clean the bucket too late, your plaster is hard and sticks to the sides. So, G 
Gene Sinker says, when I learned about FX when I was a kid, there was no net. I had a dentist in the family to teach me stuff. A friend of my dad's who did taxidermy. I knew a jewelry maker, plaster, all the way. Uh, you and me both, my friend. When I was learning this and figuring it out, it was uh, not, there was no internet like this. And let's, let's face it, YouTube. YouTube is huge. There is YouTube University. You can teach yourself anything. What is the weather like in April from Monster Camp? Honey, you're up. <laughs> can you hear my wife while she's talking? Comment if you can hear her. Can you hear me? I'm down with another testing. Uh, monster camp in April. Uh, a hoodie would be smart. I would choose layers. We can, we've can. had snow in April. We've had 90 degrees in April. You can do either one. My guess is it'll probably be cool. Uh, we can have storms because it is the stormy season. So I would suggest layers. Something comfortable. And then... Um, you know, maybe a layer shirts so you can take off if you get hot, if you have warmer weather. But as a rule, the beginning of or the middle of April and as such is going to be very comfortable, maybe even a little chilly at times. We are in North Texas, so we will get hot in the summer, but in April we will not be hot. <laughs> Alan Pop's apprenticeship. There's Ezekiel. <laughs> Cobwebs and candlesticks had to go back to wrapping presents. Says good night, happy holidays. Will you use burlap or hemp for strength? No. Um, I probably won't use either, simply because uh, I'm just going to make a nice thick mold that uh, is is shaped. If I was trying to make this really thin and worried about keeping it lightweight, I'm not. Um, I'm just going to make it a nice thick mold that will be plenty strong. When you drop a mold that has burlap or hemp in it, it's really hard to glue it back together because there's burlap or hemp in the way. Uh, when this breaks, it should be nice clean breaks like a china cup that you can easily glue back together. I'm not planning on it breaking, but if it breaks, you know. Any exciting Christmas festivities in store for the Hopses? Well, <laughs> today we went on a deer drive. A deer drive is um, it's what we drive around looking at deer because deer are beautiful. So we, we drive around and look at wildlife. So deer and owls and whatnot. And today we saw two beautiful owls and one had just caught a mouse or a rat or whatever. And it, uh, it sat still for us to take its picture, which was lovely. <coughs> Those were barred owls. So we got some good barred owl pictures today, on our cell phones, no less. I can't show you my picture because you're on my phone. mixing up plaster the exact same way. This time I'm going to put a little bit more powder in it and that's going to make it a little bit thicker. I think you only really need hemp or burlap in a mold you're going to bake for foam latex. Um, we don't use it in those either. Um, and the reason is, you've ever gone to ceramics class Every now and then, someone's mold will explode in the kiln. And the teacher always says, or someone's sculpture will explode in the kiln. The teacher always says, moisture is the problem. It hit a pocket of moisture, that moisture became steam, and then it had to go somewhere, so it blew out of the uh, clay or whatever it was. So, I don't like it in there either, because there's no way that hemp or or burlap is going to maintain the same moisture level as all the stone around it. 
And those molds are so small most of the time that you don't really need it in there. Um, depending on how my day goes tomorrow, I might go fishing tomorrow. Yep, Christmas Day, lovely day with the family, and then a little bit of fishing. We'll see. Because it is beautiful weather right now. One of the only things that I do that is not work, meaning sculpting, molding, painting, that kind of stuff, uh, haunted house stuff, is fishing. That is my one true hobby. And I always throw them back. I just catch them and throw them back. I really just like being out on the water or in the water or whatever. So this was a bigger batch. This was um, two and a half inches, almost three inches of water. This will be way more than enough to finish out this mold. Someone said air bubble. Can you elaborate? Whoever said air bubble? Psycho Wax Man says, I love nature. I went fishing this morning in Castiac Lake. I hope I said that right. Castiac Lake? Castiac? Caustic Lake? Castiac? I don't know, but did you catch anything? Let's talk about what's important. Yeah, did you and, catch anything? And what do you have there? What yeah. Kind of, what kind of fish? I don't even know what part of the country you're yeah, in. Where are you? Because you might have different fish than we have. Uh, Ezekiel is struggling with a food coma. <laughs> Psycho Axman says you never bake a mold with burlap at all. Vic Springston, who is doing a haunt in 2020, we talked to him yesterday. Do you ever put fiberglass in your plaster to make it stronger? Uh, I have. Um, I'm not doing that right now, but I have done that in the past. Psycho says the best lure is Velveeta cheese frozen. Uh, so you're catfishing then? Yeah, what, what are you fishing for? You're catfishing if that's your best bait. That's that's pretty good. See how I'm past cracked earth a little bit? I'm actually right at cracked earth right now if I spread this around. But I'm going to add a little more because I want this to be thicker. Boston says was watching while updating the site. Finished. See you guys soon and have a good holiday. Merry Christmas, Boston. See you, Boston. See you soon. Your room is ready. <laughs> We're like the hops home for wayward haunters. The, the hops home for wayward hops haunters. Home for wayward haunters. Indeed. Uh, let's see. Air bubble is a reference to causes of mold cracks. The most common I've had were caused by molds cooling too fast. Yeah, that happens. Brandon says, maybe you answered this, but I missed it. Will you be having another monster camp this summer? Honey, when are the monster camps? And is every monster camp we have right now full? Everything is full. Every monster camp we have planned right now is full. If possible, we will try and squeeze one more in the summer, but... There may be one this summer. We will try. It is, it is difficult to do, but we will try. We need more more months in a year. I'm grabbing another set of gloves. Psycho accent says no. It don't melt on the hook and it sets for 30 minutes on the hook in the water. It must nice. be catfish. Nice. You're, you're, so you're catching catfish then, is that it's, right? It's frozen Velveeta. That's very exciting. 
Okay. I've let this stand. That's probably been a minute. do it exactly the way that you said, but yes, I do make silicone masks. Several of the folks who work at Immortal, I taught how to make silicone masks over the phone before they ever started working there. Ezekiel says, the boys are pulling heaps of mud crabs out at the moment. Craig said to say hi and let him know how the lures go. I will. I will. Uh, I'm I'm really holding on to the, those lures for uh, that lure is huge. alligator gar. They will love it. It's top water, and they come up to the surface to breathe. And right then, you cast just past them, and they will chase you. And they, that is that's what I'm really waiting for for those suckers. Uh, bass will get them, but uh, it's got to be a good sized bass. And we have a top water season in Texas. It's only about three and a half months long. And then the water's just too cold for top water lure action. Okay, now the whole thing is covered. I'm not near as worried about air bubbles as I was before because I'm not worried about catching surface detail. I'm going to use this material because I have plenty to just re-wet everything. I'm going to reintroduce this mold to, um, to moist plaster. This, yeah, this mold. And I got really runny plaster right now, so I got a couple air bubbles that were just, not air bubbles, but they're chances for air bubbles. Sorry. See this? I'm currently trying my hand at making a fairy house lamp some of the foam craft pumpkins I didn't end up using this Halloween. That is so First of all, why the heck didn't you use those pumpkins during Halloween? What's wrong with you? Second, uh, very cool. I make a lot of fairy stuff too, simply for my monster museum. That's, a, that's sort of a big part of it. Oh, you pre-freeze the hook oh, in it. Interesting. You're gonna have to do this. Gene Sanford says we get tons of gar here in Arkansas. I'll bet you do. Yeah, we get a good amount in Texas. I love catching alligator gar. It's like I'm fist fighting a dinosaur. We'd love to see you do a full silicone mask. Not many great tutorials on YouTube. Some do the sloth method, but I would like no. to have it on the core. So it moves with the actor's facial expressions. Yeah, uh, absolutely. That's possible one day. Um, the, the problem is most of what you see me doing here, I am doing uh, for money. <laughs> uh, I am doing this as part of my business. I'm going to sell it. Um, I am not as good of a silicone mask maker as Immortal Masks. And I don't feel a need to... Um, I don't feel a need to muddy up that market by putting out a product that's not quite as good as theirs. I'm just not as good of a sculptor as Andrew Freeman. And by now, they have their processes so well figured out that, you know, I'm, I'm not even going to be competition to them. All I can do is undersell them, and then all you're doing is buying an inferior product for a lesser price. So, no. 
Um, but it doesn't mean I won't ever do one. I want to do a monster camp at some point in time on making silicone masks. I'll probably start with a silicone half mask. You know what? No, I'll probably just go a full head silicone mask. But I don't know if everybody's going to be able to make their own or if it is something that happens where people watch me make it because me guiding eight people through making a full head silicone mask, I don't think one weekend will cut it. Or they would have to mold something that I sculpted because they won't have time. That would be a week class, a week camp. It would be tight. But you know, maybe if it was if I only did four people, that'd probably be okay. And have to add a day to it too. We have to start Thursday. Okay, you're going to need a heavy weight with a fast spinner bait, says Psycho Act. Gene Sanford says alligator needle nose, hog nose, paddlefish, only good to eat hours after the catch. After that, yuck. Yeah. Go late at night to do chunk water and bowfish. Is Gene Sanford. Gotcha. Garbrook said, I had the great love to spend some time with Dick Smith, who once told me that every FX artist needs to take a break from ugly monsters now and then and make something beautiful or cute. Well, I made a baby Yoda recently. I made three, so I'm good for about a decade. What part of Texas are y'all in? My dad is in Longview. I live in Baton Rouge, the city of CFS X masks. They make some cool stuff. Who's that? Bayou Muscle. Well, we are in um, Quinlan, Texas, about an hour from Longview. Do a silicone mask, Alan. I've never done the silicone stuff. Who's that? That was Psycho Axe Man. Tom Braswell says, I'd like to take that camp. Here's Mike Skullberg. Let's all make baby Yoda silicone masks. <laughs> oh, Skullberg. No, he likes to put it. Gene Sammer says, get your wallet ready. Well, yes. If I did a full silicone mask camp, uh, it would probably cost about $1,000. Because that's, that's what it would have to cost. Um, in in materials. Josh Sculperman SPFX says you could do an intro classes on YouTube and do it with the actual students. Psycho Axman says they're like platzel silicone and different plates. Yes. Um, Normally, I do my silicone mask in Platzil Gel 25, um, or I will do it in EcoFlex 30 from Reynolds. EcoFlex 30, I like it gives me a little more working time. Normally, I like you know fast, short working times because I work pretty fast, but. Trying to get that much silicone into a mold in five minutes is hard. You can do a retarder with the uh, Platzil Gel 25, but easier just to use an EcoFlex 30, which has a uh, four or five hour demold time. It would probably be best to do a silicone mask class like you make, like your makeup class. You doing it, you just get people to help you along the way. Yeah, more of a, an observation. And see, in that class, I wouldn't have to charge a thousand dollars for. That's one that I could still bring in at that two hundred fifty dollar mark. What's that, honey? Would they be learning as well if they're not making it. Yeah, because you know they can they can mix some epoxy. They you know to make the mold. They the only thing they wouldn't do is is get sculpting. But 
the really the technique. And if we had that couple days, we could run the mask more than once. Okay, so here now I'm in the ugly waiting game part of this. Because I want my plaster to get thicker. We fish for gar in Indiana. We use a long rapala lure with two treble hooks. Break the bill off and run it right past them. Bam, they get it every time. Are you talking bass now? No, gar. Oh. We fish for gar in Indiana. Well, uh, we have a lot of gar in Texas. And one of my favorite ways to fish for gar is you use a, a little chunk of nylon rope, white nylon rope. You tie a knot in one end and you melt that, and you let about four or five inches of the rope trail back, unwind it, unbraid it, and then comb it out. And then you run it through the top of the water and the gar bite it, and their teeth get stuck in the rope in all those little web threads. specialized stuff for all kinds of silicone. Lots of money wasted in trial, etc. Yes. Yes, there is. Is this from Biddy? Um, gel 25 is for Biddy, yes. I'm adding a little powder to my plaster. I'm, I'm putting a little more plaster in it just to get it thicker. That does weaken the strength of the stone a little bit, but I'll have plenty strong stone down there on the bottom where it needs to be strong. This is just filler to make sure it sits flat and to make sure that uh, it's thick enough all over the bowl. Dartmouth says, Smith said, ugly is easy and beautiful is hard. But once you master beautiful, ugly will never be a challenge. I would say that's true. Because beauty is all about proportion and symmetry once you nail that. Fighting Muscle says, I could make mold with clay at home and bring it to you to mold and cast. Maybe save some time for the silicone class. Each student makes his own at home or make videos. Yeah, as long as they're driving in, that could work. Everything you make will have a look alive and like it has real soul and personality. Psycho says silicone is very fast and direct. Uh, it is, actually. Um, there are aspects of silicone that I like. And there are aspects of silicone that are great but not necessary. It all, Gene Sanford says it all started with plaster and latex. I get laughed at by the younger text, but I went back to the cost of supplies. You know, I'll tell you what, also, I mean, there's just something nice about this, because right now, I'm using mud, clay, to make a mold, which is a rock, and then later I'm going to fill it with tree sap. You can't get more natural than that, as far as materials and, and what you're doing. It's a very earthy art if you're doing latex and plastic. Thanks for all of your knowledge. Is mask making your main source of income? Uh, no, but it's up there. Um, probably my main source of income, I would say, is haunted house stuff. Uh, and by haunted house stuff, I mean my day job is I'm the director of Dark Hour Haunted House in Plano, Texas, and I do that 40 hours a week. Uh, 50. Um, but that is my main source of income. Now I probably do just as much in other stuff between my monster museum, my um, you know the monster museum, selling costumes. There's a little bit of YouTube money. It's not huge. Um, but if you're in this for the money. 
I urge you to work at Arby's, do something else, because this is not a job for those who are in it for the money. I do almost everything I do because I want haunted houses to be better. Why? just want to say that hashtag our family Merry Christmas. That's from Psycho Axe. Merry Christmas, Psycho Axe Oh, man. very kind. It's very sweet. Thank you. Everybody calls me wife. You realize that? Well, I call you wife. A good way to learn silicone techniques without wasting expensive silicone is to use gelatin. But you have to work with it at very hot temperatures. Uh, yeah, the only thing that you have to worry about there is that um, there are, there's nothing that will make gelatin not cure. And there are lots of things that will make silicone not cure. So, you know, gelatin is a lot more forgiving. Yes, cost-wise, of course. But also in just that, you know, if there's latex around silicone, it's not going to set up for you. Big dog says hello. Hey, big dog. Ezekiel, 40 hours a week, uh, 50 or 60, uh, 70. Something like that, yeah. yeah. Hot liquid gelatin is like napalm if you get it on you. Yeah, it's good for you. Do it what you love, that's so cool. Is the haunt open year round? Um, we work year round. The haunt is open for five different shows throughout the year. Uh, they span from a December show to a July show, and then of course October. Um, so, yes, yes, about 20 folks work there year round. Merry Krampusmas from Big Dog. Merry Krampusmas. See, Doyle has joined us again. Yes, and he is on the prowl tonight. Yes, he is. It is Christmas Eve. Hello, Doyle. Did you step in plaster? So he jumped up on the table. Maybe. Okay. Yeah, he jumped right up here. Question. Could you Vaseline a plaster mold then add resin to it? No. Because a plaster mold is rigid. Resin is rigid. So you would not be able to demold it without breaking the plaster. Here. By God, let this entertain you. Good boy. He wants in the other room. Now, I want at least a half inch over everything that I've got here. This horn on top of the head, I don't have that yet. It's very hard to build up to that. Hello, Doyle. Wife, I hope you're monitoring the Doyle situation. Uh, no. I may need your assistance. Hi, buddy. You've got a raccoon in the shop. <laughs> Doyle. You've been... Speaking of undercuts and mold walking, do those pumpkin teeth that get stuck in the mold? Uh, stuck forever? No. But they do end up... Uh, Doyle. You're killing me, friend. He knows. He knows. Can't pick him up. No, I can't pick him up. Do the pumpkin teeth ever get stuck in the molds? No, they don't. Um, what you can do, though, if you're not careful, is you could make it so you can't pull them out. They're not stuck, but you haven't given yourself an angle to pull them out of the mold. That's where you can use silicone to its advantage. 
<laughs> How do you guys get scare actors? Do you fall Do Doyle, you don't jump. Oh, oh good. <coughs> Doyle, you don't want this on you. No, no, Doyle. No, no, no. Don't rub against the mold and flirt. <laughs> Honey, hands, now, I need you. Plaster is kicking. I know this is amusing. He wants attention. Okay, he's fine. Come, come, get, come over here and pick him up. He wants picked up. He wants love. And I can't give it to him. When we got him, I was reading a series of novels where Doyle Carrick was the main character, and he was an adventurous guy who got in a lot of trouble. That's Doyle. It struck a chord, so his name became Doyle. That's why you need a silicone jacket. Uh, Doyle is so adorable. He is like a cat of Alan. I suppose. He's a... Doyle. Healthier, I'll tell you that. Doyle clearly wants to use that giant litter box back there. Uh, no. No, he, he's hoping that there's mice or something back there. They're, they're all laughing at. Pay attention to that baby, Linda Forbes, they're all laughing at this. <laughs> My wife came over here to do just that. See what's happening. Let's look. This looks a little thin, and there were teeth pretty high right there, so that goes right there. It's a brow. I know I put some over it, but let's just put that right there and be safe. I'm thinking about my sculpture. I know that head horn is right here somewhere got to make sure that that has at least a half inch of plaster all over it. Right now, I'm going around the mold. I'm cleaning this up. This is the important part of plastering. I want this to be an effective mold. No, he does not care what I'm trying to get done tonight. He needs your attention. It's the very tip of that. We are both cat and dog people, not like one of each, but both of us, we both like cats and dogs. Um, right now we don't have dogs because we have some, some nervous kitties, but we, we do intend to get puppies, and that way the cats can train the puppies. I feel that I'm pretty well covered. Let's get you guys back here. I'm trying to get out of Doyle's way with the camera, I think. Pretty well covered. So now it's a matter of when I pour this up, I want this to be flat. gel state right now. My cat is bigger than most people's dogs. 
Okay. Merry Christmas to you all. It's time to go find the pool with my kids. Also, there is beer and vodka, and vodka to consume, apparently. That's Ezekiel. Well, you're doing Christmas, right? Merry Christmas, Ezekiel. Ezekiel's in Australia, for those who don't know. Which is why he's going to a pool right now. Which foam do you use if you don't want to bake it? <laughs> Hold on. Which foam do I use for what? Do you use if you don't want to bake it? I use a lot. I use different foams for different things. So it depends on what you're talking about. Will you do a burlap rub down on the plaster after it hardens a bit? Uh, yeah, I'll probably use a shop rag or something. Right now I'm in that shaping phase. I will buff it to make it a little prettier. I'm worried about that horn, can you tell? I keep patching that spot. But honestly, with this these little plastic scrapers are from Harbor Freight. If only I had an affiliate program, I could say that you could find them in my affiliate store for Harbor Freight. I don't have one of those yet because my wife refuses to do it. What am I refusing to do? The affiliate program. Oh. No, These come from Harbor Freight. I told her about it yesterday, and she hasn't gotten it done yet, which I think is ridiculous. She's had a good 16 hours. But yeah, Harbor Freight, man, these little guys are awesome. I was wrapping your presents. Well, take them back, because I'm terrible to you. You are bad. Take all the presents back. You don't get any presents. Just kidding, right? She's I'm just going around now. I'll make it look pretty. Okay. Tom Braswell said, which foam do you use if you don't want to bake it? And you asked where he said, replace the foam latex. You, you can't. Uh, foam latex is foam latex. There is nothing out there that's got properties like foam latex. Um, do a simple, um, you know, a, uh, a two or three pound flexible foam but it's not going to have the same properties. It won't have the same stretch. It just won't be as nice as foam latex is. Now, we do a lot of foam latex at dark hour. So we have an oven. We do, we do all that. Uh, and I was actually considering doing a monster camp on foam latex at some point in time in my massive spare time. The problem is I'm just out of weekends. So... Um, a year has 52 weekends. Dark hour is open for 13 of those. I do actor training at other haunted houses on three or four of those. I have a Renaissance festival that I have to work on, so that takes two or three weekends. And then it's open for eight weekends. And I don't think I'll do any kind of a rub down at all. That is uh, burlap, so I'm just getting it so smooth by hand here. It's working very well. You've got a nice flat spot on the nose to keep the whole stuff. Yes, that's why I put that little bump up here. Calm down, it's Christmas Eve. It's 7.48 p.m. and people are working. Probably was aimed at Doyle. Do this now, right now, when the plaster is green. Clean up around your around your edges. Less to rasp later.
Yeah, we call him the Indiana Jones of cats because he is definitely an adventure cat. I don't want to shift it or move it right now because um, it's still very, very green. It's, it's, it's warming, but it's not even really hot yet. Let's clean up. Jagged on this mold, I'm cleaning. That baby's done nice. Do you own the haunted house? If not, how many of your props are in it? And do you have a video of the haunted house? Thanks. Uh, Dark Hour is a professional haunted house. It is uh, building is fifty thousand square feet. I'm not an owner. I'm just I was I'm I'm the director of the show. Uh, that's my job there. And. Uh, a lot of things that I made are in it, and a lot of my ideas are in it. Um, I don't really have a lot of aspirations of owning my own haunted house. I just want to work around monsters all day. So I work at a haunted house in order to do that. I don't need to own the business of a haunted house. And frankly, I'm getting all the benefits of haunt ownership, maybe even more, without any of the financial risk by working there. So. All the folks who say they want to own their own haunted house. Gamblers. Those people are gamblers. Alexa, countdown. Eight minutes. Eight minutes. Starting now. Eight minutes. And then I'll flip it, I'll get the head out of it. And you'll see the sculpting form that I sculpted this on. Just a little plaster bust. Hey, wife. Yes. I'm going to need you to tell a story. Wife, this is your job. You could talk about our uh, the show of Wreck the Halls if you enjoyed that. I did enjoy it. Wreck the Halls is beautiful. Uh, let's see. Well, Wreck the Halls is happening, and then Thursday is our last day, and then Friday and Saturday the show is open again, and it is a beauty. Wreck the Halls has got a lot of humor in it and a lot of tradition, uh, old folklore and such. Um, and uh, it's just a really, really, really beautiful show. Uh, I find that when you go into a show, and I'm not in this one, sometimes I'm in some shows and, and this one I am not in, but I go to every single show that Dark Hour does because I you know, want to support and see our friends and just I just want to go. I think it's an absolutely beautiful show. But when you go into a haunted house where your friends are actors, you get what I call a special show. This includes my husband, who occasionally suits up and will be in the show. I never know whether or not he is in the show until I'm usually unceremoniously and, well, I'm grabbed. Let's just put it that way. Let's just say that, that when he is in costume and he sees me come through the show, that whole... That whole, you know, don't touch the monsters, they won't touch you. That's a bunch of crap. Right out the window. Because I get majorly groped. And uh, fortunately, I know that this is my spouse who's doing this, and he's the director, so, you know, nothing's going to stop him. However, other patrons are not sure what to think when they see this happen. And it does happen. 
I do get uh, a considerable amount of gropage when he is in costume, and I have no idea where he is. He can see me, I can't see him, and then it's it's on. So thankfully, my elderly mother is not on YouTube and has no idea that he does this because she thinks he hung the moon, but the truth is he's a fiend. And back to you, Alan. We're getting really hot now. What kind of rasp do you use? A sure form tool. Do you, have you ever owned your own font? A Stanley sure form tool right here. Yes, I have owned several haunted houses. All the haunts that I owned were what I call parasite haunted houses. Meaning I opened a small show inside of a bigger park and I fed off of their audience. So I might open up a show inside and that allows the haunt that has three attractions to say they have four attractions. That might, and then, you know, I produce a quality product. So that helps the air of quality of their park. And, you know, then my show might be an extra 10 bucks. Yeah. Why, why is she not in camera view? <laughs> she's shot. She's yeah, she does, she, she's... If you ever saw the TV show Tim the Tool Man Taylor, or uh, Tool Time it was called, he had a neighbor who was always over the fence and you never saw him. That's my wife. She's behind the camera. That's not my show. So she, yeah, it's not her show, so she stays behind the camera and tells her story. It's not ready yet because it has to be cold to unmold. Uh, the stone is strongest when it is already cooled down from getting hot. But um, I will often demold at this stage. I'm going to wait for that full eight minutes to happen, and then I'm going to flip this puppy over, and I'm going to take the uh, the head out of it. Uh, if there's an easy way to do that, the one one of the head forms that I sculpt on doesn't have a, a clean handle in the back. So if it's just a flat plaster head, then I have to pry against the mold, and then I would have to wait a little while for it. But uh, yeah, this gets pretty hot. The thicker the plaster, the hotter it gets. And now when it's sitting on my shelf, I'll know what it is. How long has the video been on? Can you tell? Uh, four minutes. Yeah, it's about an hour and a half. Okay, then. I've moved it to where the edge is hanging off the table, so I can rasp it now. Are you doing exciting plan for transfer? Yes. Very exciting. How's that sound? I, uh, I'll tell you, how many people are there on? 34. Okay. I'm doing classic monsters. 
I'm doing uh, costumes for the classic monsters. Frankenstein, Wolfman, Dracula, Mummy, um, a swamp creature. I'm doing those. And I'm going to do a set of them in black and white, like the black and white movies. So there. What's that? Santa is in New Hampshire right now. Hope those kids are sleeping. My wife tracks Santa through NORAD. Alexa, stop. when it was like super hot a little while ago. Where did one purchase a shirt from before? Amazon. If I had an affiliate Amazon link, I would say go to my affiliate store and you could buy it right there. But Amazon has them. Home Depot carries them. This is a Stanley Sureform Rasp. Excellent for carving EPS foam as well as knocking the sharps off of your plaster molds. I have gone all the way around now. And it's been my eight minutes, so I'm going to flip. Like the last bit, it's been $10. Well. Oh, as I feared, this is the one that has no handle. Little chip came off of my form. Second little chip came off of my head sculpting form. So I've got a good vacuum on there. This sculpt sat on the mold for a few days. So I gotta dig a little clay out first. Too much of a vacuum is there. Have a wire loop tool, clay sculpting tool. Sometimes you get enough steam from the plaster that it really softens the clay up nice and it lets your head out. I think this clay was a little too thick. The sculpt had been sitting on there for a few days, maybe a full week. So, so how do you fix that? Loop tool and pressure washing? Pretty much. I could pressure wash down in this crack. I'm going to try and get this head form out before I pressure wash though. Because this clay is going to peel out pretty darn easy in all honesty because of the pledge. This is the problem I have when I make a mold. Well, most of my head forms have a, they're hollow and they have a handle and you can just pull it right out. So, but because this one didn't get a handle put in it, I use it. It's a little harder to demold. All right, so that did something.
there we go. There's my sculpting bust for half masks it out. Get him out the way. Move, mask, get out the way. And let's pull some clay out. This is why I love Pledge. <laughs> you ain't never seen nothing like that. Because Crystal Clear doesn't do that for you. Alan, you make it look so easy. It's so easy, easy, when everybody's trying to please me. It all feels alright, framing through the night. Guns and Roses. Forget what song. Oh. Well. Where's he at? Oh. Okay, yeah, so it's coming out nice and clean. Uh, just using my hands. It's all I've used so far to get this play out of here. I'm sure that you guys want to see me take some pumpkin teeth out of the mold. That's exciting. Uh, technically, it's reusable. I am going to throw it away. Not because I hate the environment. I'm throwing it away because it's got little plaster chunks in it. It's got, it's just going to, it's not going to be clean clay. So you could reuse it. And I used to when I was a young and struggling master maker but I'm not that anymore I'm, I don't feel young Who are you? three layers of pledge on the clay three layers of pledge whoever said that is someone who's made a mask before and saw how easy that was <laughs> oh yeah yep three layers and the clay just comes right out and leaving me a nice clean mold And all this is caught up here in the mouth because the, uh, and it's a nice lemony smell. Uh, uh, it's caught up in there because of the teeth. The teeth have little pegs on the back side. So those little pegs are still holding on to that clay. You're giving that clay a lot of bite. But yeah, it's, it's pretty much not grabbing the sides at all. Every bit of hold on this clay is a mechanical lock. Not just vacuum or it's bonded to it. That happens sometimes when you don't use anything. Grab some pliers, and I'll start pulling some pumpkin teeth. Pumpkin teeth stubs. I don't want this to seem like a magic trick, so I want to show you. Well, Psycho Axe Man, that's why I do it. I'm glad you've learned something. Comes right out. These teeth, here's why they're amazing. They're perfectly tapered. So everything up here is thinner than everything down here. Everything in the middle is thinner than everything back here at the base. As long as you put it in past those shoulders, you know, then uh, it pulls right out of the bowl. Now, it might have a little bit of grip to it because it is um, 
you know, there's a bit of a vacuum lock up against that plastic. And see what I mean about having room? If you don't have enough room to pull the tooth out, then you can't get the tooth out. But that's a mechanical thing much more than it is a... Get this one here. See those pegs from the teeth were holding it in. And when you have like sheets of clay like this that won't come out, use a loop tool and run a little gutter through it. And then the clay has a place to go. You can fold it and it's got a place to go. If there's something in the way, then it's not going to come out. I just have to expose all these teeth roots, then I can pull the teeth. If you pour plaster in there to make a bust out of that, or will plaster on plaster damage it? It'll never come out. It is a rigid to a rigid. Uh, someone messed up putting resin into a plaster mold. Um, it's a rigid to a rigid, so it's you would make you're making two lock at that point. Uh, you have to put a flexible into it. Sorry, guys, I'm grabbing a seal. I'll be sitting over this mold for a bit. Grab a couple of wooden tools, a bamboo skewer, and a popsicle stick in case I need them. So that trench right there held clay. I put a I pulled out of the middle of it. And now I can just use a little wooden tool and fold it into the middle. And once it has a place to go, it'll leave. As long as that clay is in the middle, it's not going to go anywhere. It's very satisfying when you're cleaning a mold out like this and you get a big chunk out ridiculously gratifying. I have no great pleasure in picking scabs or popping zits, but I assume it's similar to that. I'm doing something that is ostensibly not pleasant, but when it really happens, I derive pleasure from it. I do not understand pimple popping videos on YouTube. Weirdest crap ever. Now the more you know your sculpture, the, the, be the easier this process is going to be. I'm using wooden tools in here because uh, the stone is harder than the wood in theory. Not right now, but it will be when it gets cured. Okay, now wait. I pour plaster in the life cast made of plaster bandages all the time. And do the plaster bandages survive? Or do the plaster bandages get destroyed?
and you on something with zero undercuts, that's possible. And your life casts are just plaster bandages, no alginate, no um, no alginate, no silicone. Most life casts now have silicone or alginate that really took the detail. And the plaster bandage is just the mother mold. Yep, just bandages. Okay, so, okay. Uh, yeah, and you're not getting that same level of detail that would cause it to, uh, that would cause it to grab. And you probably put a good release on it, and, and you can do that. But this has way too many nooks and crannies, and the plaster is just going to just get stuck. If you had a, a perfect half of a sphere made of plaster, you could put mold release on it and then pour plaster into it and pull out another half of a sphere because there's no undercuts. An undercut is something that's going to cause it to grab when pulled in a certain direction. Think about your fist going into wet plaster. You let that harden. Well, you won't be able to get your hand out because right here at the wrist is thinner than your hand. So this won't come out. You've got to break that plaster. There's a lot of little pieces like that. Everywhere that it hooks in and turns, um, that's going to get stuck. Now, are the pumpkin teeth reusable? abso farging lutely Every time I'm going in, I'm pulling out a tooth. so much. Merry I look Christmas. forward to seeing you. I remember meeting you at Transworld one year. It might, have, it might have been MHC, but I remember meeting you because you were, and I wanted to introduce you to my friend Zach, who was also in Nebraska. Wait. He was in, he was in Des Moines. He was in Iowa. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I don't remember, but I think I remember. Psycho Axman says, but if the clay is thick enough, it won't. If the clay is thick enough, it won't what? Uh, Linda says, true, but we're just making the headworms to slow down. And she understands what you think now about the damages. Gotcha. Yes. Cycle Axman says, I had that other pet probably. We need at least one inch of clay. Uh, yeah, uh, over your, I like, and also for just for shrinkage, you want to build out your uh, head form a bit. Because latex is going to shrink about 10, 15% now with how many fillers are in it. So. Yeah. Oh, it's exciting. I'm seeing tooth nubs. It's all fun and games until I have exposed tooth nubs. Then it's more fun and games. Because those teeth are in there like this and they're the, the back ends and they're holding the clay behind it from coming out. Or else the saw just would have peeled out easy peasy. And it says, yes, it trans will not in the airbrush for two. Yeah. Big Springson says, do you think it would be hard to make a Pompeii body cast with the plastic? 
a Pompeii body cast. I assume you mean uh, one of the people who have been turned to ash and their, their body cavities, their bodies rotted away and stuff filled that space. Um, making the mold for that would be difficult. Now, you could just do it out of plaster bandages. That'd be fine. Or you could make a tape cast. Do it if you... I have a video series on making a mannequin that I made my shop mannequin out of that way. And I made a packing tape, a heavy-duty packing tape um, mold form. We taped it over a person. And then from that... Oh, look at that big piece that it's got out. And then from that, I then put in uh, Sika fence foam from Home Depot, which if I had an affiliate program, you could just click on a link and get it. But you've got to find it on Home Depot. Anyway. So... Yeah, and then you fill it with that foam, and then you have a foam version of a Pompeii person, basically. Because you can tape them in whatever pose you want. Hey, Shannon, thank you for the Christmas card. Hope you have a Merry Christmas. You too, Linda. Merry Christmas to you. Glad you like the card. Sit out. A lot of cards. Yeah. Basically, we took we, we we tried to send a card to every customer whose address and stuff we had. See, we're getting there. Now I'm down this Grinchy nose. Yeah, I'm very happy with this. My mold is 90% clean, 95, 98% clean, something like that. Uh, there are these little horns up here on the side of the head. It's eyebrow horns. Don't need to stick that long. They have some clay hiding in them. Because wood, uh, a metal tool on this soft stone will scar it, and that might change the sculpture. So if I use a wooden tool, it is not as strong as the plaster, so the tool would get damaged before I damage the stone mold. But the tool is firmer than the clay that is trapped in the mold, which is what I'm trying to remove. So that is pretty much it. Now I'm going to use my secret weapon. What are you seeing the floor and paint of the grouch? You very well may. Yeah, I'll probably do it this weekend actually. Um, Depending upon how my day goes tomorrow, I might come in and do a pour.
little bit of air to blast that clay around and get it out of the way. It's a gum. Everybody, I am pretty close to wrapping up for the night. As soon as I get this nose clear, and that's happening soon. Um, thank you guys for watching on this Christmas Eve. You have a million ways you could spend Christmas Eve, and I appreciate that you chose to hang out with me and the wife in the shop. And I appreciate that my wife chose to hang out in the shop. She certainly could have taken the easy road and uh, couched it right after she was done with her duties over there. Okay, that was that. Uh, you got Doyle in your lap? No. Okay, where did he go? Okay, calm him down because he's about to do some air. What we have here is clean mold. I do have a little tiny bit of clay up here and up here and up here. All that will come out in time. I'll get it tomorrow before I pour. And tomorrow I'll also clean up all this clay. I'm not doing it tonight. You guys are awesome. Merry Christmas. And uh, I hope you guys, hope your holiday is everything you would like it to be. Uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out. We molded a grouch. And I'll probably pour it up sometime the next couple days. You guys are awesome. Thanks. Go make stuff.